Hey folks, Malforn here. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're covering Dev Diary 131, Crusader Kings 3, University 101. So this is the Dev Diary they mentioned last week. It's going to cover how the university decision is getting a bit of a revamp, a relaunch, and how the new education tier 5 traits are going to work. We've also got a breakdown of how all of those look, so we'll take a look over them as well by the end of the video. So we're just going to get straight into it. There is a little bit of an opening remarks. We don't need to go through this for this video. It's just giving you like a history of universities, the name. It's going to be called universities, but it kind of covers like religious sites and things like that as well that were especially kind of scholarly in their uh, location. So uh, yeah, we're just going to get straight to the activity part. As always, I will leave a link to this in the description down below. So you can read through that first section. It is quite interesting, but uh, you know, we don't want to keep you here too long today. So we're just going to get straight into it. So the activity itself, the university visit is a minor activity that adult landed rulers can always initiate as long as they have enough gold. To keep it in line with pre-existing decisions to go to university, it is quite expensive. To keep the challenge balanced, the final cost is dynamic like all activities and changes with your tier and era. So exactly the same as feasts, hunts, pilgrimages. The price goes up depending on what, uh, you know, where you are in the game and things like that. So as we've seen, kind of all makes sense. And then on top of that, the activity takes six months, can only be started once every 20 years, and is only once per location. So you're not going to be able to spam this out. You can only do it every 20 years. So I think even on the best character, you're going to do it, what, three times at most, if you're lucky. And then you can only do it once per location. I mean, as you can see on the map here, it's going to use the same travel kind of UI that we do already. I suppose if you're like this chap here, you've got three right next to each other. So... You just choose these three, but I imagine if you're elsewhere in the world, they're going to be sizable, you know, journeys. So it might not be as easy in other locations of the world, but, you know, just like real life, that was the case. You might have noticed, however, that not all valid locations are university seats. As discussed in that first section, large religious centers were often centers of study as well, and we've included them as potential destinations. As you can see, Isfahan, Baghdad, places like that, Medina, are all going to be places that you can travel to that you would maybe think of more as religious sites. So that's pretty cool to see in the game, as you can see here. Large religious center, so a lot of kind of learning going on there. And then being a minor activity, the choice of intents and options are limited but flavorful. There are only two intents available, and they both represent two contrasting approaches to your university experience and will significantly change both your approach to your studies and the results you can achieve. In fact, each activity event will have at least one special option unlocked behind each intent so they will have very different options some obviously exclusive to each one which is cool to see the first one is study hard pretty self-explanatory you went there to study and you will study hard no matter the stress cost you'll have to pay you try and make the most of your time at the university in order to maximize your chances of success at the end of the activity and increase your rewards so this is all about literally just going there you're gonna be a bookworm you're just gonna learn from your teachers and you're going to come out with some cool rewards, but also a hell of a lot of stress. So that is some risk you're taking on to try and get those rewards. In fact, the results and rewards you can obtain at the end of your studies is measured by a value which is very similar to the success chance for pilgrimages, piousness, for example. The activity can't fail per se, but the outcome of your rewards will depend on its value. So it's not like a hunt where you can fail or succeed. It's basically a bar that fills up, and the more you fill the bar up, the better your rewards, basically. So you can't really fail. I guess you could do so terrible you get really bad rewards, but can't literally come back with nothing. Whereas obviously if you fill the bar up a lot, you're going to get way more out of it. The second one is Goliardic Lifestyle, which is a completely different approach. Inspired by the European Goliards, wandering students and clerics famous for their satirical poetry, exalting the art of drinking and carnal pleasure. So this is like university life these days, I guess. You're just there for a good time and the learning's kind of on the side. Uh, with this intent, your aim is to gain as much first-hand experience of life, both inside and outside the walls of the university, indulging in so-called Galeardic shenanigans. I mean, I like the sound of that. I'm always down for some shenanigans. I'll leave you the pleasure of discovering exactly what your character can get up to. The mind boggles. The general idea of this intent, however, is to gain less success chance and therefore less rewards at the conclusion of the activity, but more immediate bonuses such as lifestyle traits, XP, and skill points. So yeah, the bar that you fill up, you're less likely to get like the top tier rewards from that, but you're going to get like immediate rewards like traits, XP, and skill points to help your character like straight away. 
I would imagine the things you get from filling up the bar is going to be more like long-term benefits from doing that. You're kind of very hard is studying for the future, I guess, and kind of learning a lot. Goliardic lifestyle is more kind of like, I don't know, hands-on experience, I guess. That's how it comes across anyway to me. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. And then for the side options here, there's only one option with three levels, which represents how much money you plan to invest in study materials. The option chosen will influence your success chance and final rewards, including an illustrious artifact, cost values, work in progress as always. So this is another way to get an illustrious artifact. It is funny as we've seen more and more of these systems in tours and tournaments and then in wards and wardens. They did mention previously they were afraid of like stat stacking and that's why they did some balancing. And then the more of these that have kind of crept in, the more it seems like you can potentially now start stacking up stats again pretty crazy. So obviously this is only every 20 years and you're unlikely to be super successful in every time. So I don't think this is a way you could farm illustrious artifacts, but if you're playing a long campaign, it's a pretty good way of getting an illustrious artifact. But uh, yeah, looks pretty good. It is work in progress for the cost, so we'll see how they balance once it's actually out. But I don't think this is too crazy so far. I think it's pretty cool being able to go on these university things. It's another thing that we've seen again with tours and tournaments, getting you out into the world, getting events happening, and just making the world feel more alive, I think. And then we're going to go through some events. So we've got the, you know, arrival at Baghdad. So he's gone here. He's going to have a look around the university, get some learning on. He's studying hard. This is the bar they were talking about that you fill up. And I guess as you hit each notch here, that makes the rewards better and better. So pretty obvious. It's very much like the activities we have now. To make the interactions more impactful, we've limited the amount of guests. There are only a handful of students and teachers, which will be among the wisest minds on the map. So I think it shows here, yeah, there's only four people in this event, so it's not going to be like grand tournaments where there's, what, 130 people sometimes. There's only going to be four of you, teachers, and then a couple of students. In fact, yeah, two teachers and uh, three students. I guess you're not counted in the guest list. Well, obviously not, no. That's your guest list, I guess. So yeah, these four people are the four on the guest list. And uh, yeah, little compact thing, kind of like hunts, I guess. Some of the hunts are a bit smaller like that. And then we've got the debate here, obviously just some cool events. It'd be interesting to see how many events there are in each one. I hope there's a few so it doesn't get too repetitive, but we'll obviously see. But again, as we've seen with other things, I would imagine a university system like this and the events can be added onto with more and more DLC in the future. You know, if you have some kind of really religious DLC that we get coming out, you can obviously just put a bunch more events into these kind of uh, activities. So I'd hope they will keep growing on that. And obviously there are mods that will flesh this out a lot more, I would think, as well. So, And then this is the event for the Goliardic Lifestyle. Again, some different options. As you can see, a little bit of stress here because he's humble, but he's up there having a bit of a, a speech himself and he's given a little talk and obviously a couple of different options here. And we'll see, obviously, what kind of bonuses and things like that you can get that once uh, once it's out. And then, uh, as it says here, yeah, you're getting a bunch of stress. Nobody said getting a degree was easy. I think anyone who's been to university, not myself, I've never been, but I'm sure people who have been will tell you it is pretty stressful. I did mention that your teachers will be among the brightest minds around. And I'd like to stress it again, bit of a pun there, I guess, because if you manage to make a very good impression on them, this looks like a scene from The Matrix. I know people like these glasses in the game. It gets a bit memed on, but I just think they look pretty silly, but... That's just me. Yeah, anyway, if you do very well, so succeed in study hard, I guess even within that, there's probably only a small percentage of this happening. You can hang around and get taught more, or you can actually say to the teacher, come join me in my realm, as it's going to mention here. You can get your teacher to come back to court with you. As you can see from this chap here, for a starter, he's showing the tier five education tray here for the first time. He's got 30 intrigue, 14 stewardship, a really, really good character. You can see how you'd want him to join your realm. Get him in there as your spy master. He's just going to be overpowered. It's going to be amazing. And yeah, this is conniving puppet master. Three diplomacy, 10 intrigue, craziness. Monthly diplomacy lifestyle plus 25%. Monthly intrigue lifestyle plus 50%. And agent acceptance plus 25 so if you get this on a character early enough, you can max out these trees so easily. A 50% bonus is crazy, and then you've obviously got available bonuses elsewhere to lifestyle experience. So you could stack these pretty nicely and get through those trees relatively easily. And then, as I said before, the other tier 5 ones have been released elsewhere, so I'll put them up on the screen now. We've Virtuoso Arbitrator. 
So that's plus 10 diplomacy, plus 3 martial, and then the 50, 25 percent bonuses as we've seen before and then offer vassalization acceptance plus 25 and then you're very likely to have the lifestyle perk as well that gives is i think it's 20 is it or is it 25 again i can't remember off the top of my head but uh you're gonna get some nice vassalization options if you do manage to get this exalted warlord which is the martial one again plus 10 martial plus three stewardship plus 20 percent army movement speed pretty pretty good this one is crazy Army Siege Weapon Effectiveness, plus 50%. And then 50% Martial Experience, 25 Stewardship. I mean, this one's just really good. If you can get this, this is crazy. Your armies move faster, you've got plus 10 Martial, plus 50% Siege Weapon Effectiveness is, is crazy. But uh, pretty nice, as you, as you can see. The next one is the Stewardship one, plus 10 Stewardship, plus 3 Learning, 25% Vassal Taxes, stacked with the perks you get from that tree already. You're going to be making a lot of money if you're this. And then again, the same bonuses for your lifestyle experience. And then we're on to the last one. Learning, plus three intrigue, plus 10 learning. Development growth, 0 0.10 a month. I guess this is lands that you own. It must be that you directly own yourself. And then the lifestyle experience. I think this is almost the worst one. I think the Eritude Oracle. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. I think this is almost the worst one. The development growth is pretty nice. You know, I'm not saying this is terrible. But uh, I don't know. I think some of these other ones are, are pretty crazy. But anyway, that's our first look at these, the, the tier five traits. Looking pretty good. Some really nice bonuses. But as they will say down here, they look pretty scary. They're actually really hard to get to. The most people who are going to have this are going to be the actual university teachers, which you can't be yourself. So this is going to be some nice, you know, characters in the world. So if you get them in your court, it's going to be a really nice extra bit of stats here and there. But it's nothing too crazy. But the university graduates who already have the fourth tier traits can get this. I would imagine it's a pretty low chance, but you can get these if you go to university and you started with a fourth tier trait. I think this means like you were born with a fourth tier trait because it will go into in a second how you can level up like the level one trait to the level two, the level two to level three. But with it saying who already started with a fourth tier trait, this makes me think you have to have when you come of age that fourth tier trait before you go to university which would make sense because otherwise you could in theory level it up although as you can only do it every 20 years it's basically impossible to do that i guess that's why it kind of says this anyway it's kind of a fallback safety net i guess that you can't cheat your way to like going five times or leveling up five times or whatever or four times i guess but uh, yeah so you you have to have started with the tier four trait and then you have a chance through the events to become a level five. So pretty nice bonuses. Can't complain about them. And then rewards, as you might have guessed from what we've discussed so far, the main reward for the activity is increasing your education trait by one level. However, there's only a chance to succeed in this endeavor. It's not guaranteed. This chance is higher the lower your current level is. So it's easier to go from one to two than it is to go from two to three. As I said, I imagine from four to five is pretty difficult. So again, you're not going to be going too crazy. And then this is obviously the tier four reward. If you max out the thing, you gain three perk points and a very high chance to upgrade your education trait. So yeah, three perk points is pretty good. I mean, that's, you know, the first one, two, three tiers of a lifestyle tree. So not bad at all. Not bad. I mean, these are pretty expensive. So is it worth the trade-off? It probably is in most cases, I would think. However, even if you were to fail in improving your education, you're ensured to gain a number of perk points that increases with your achieved studiness. As we've seen here, if you're tier two, you'll get maybe like one or two perk points, I guess. So you're always going to get something out of it. An assortment of XP and skill points, depending on your event choices, and even an illustrious book if you choose the most expensive option during the activity setup and therefore went splurging on rare manuscripts. Oh, so it sounds like if you pick the tier three option in, if we scroll up in this, study materials oh no it actually says this here I, I missed this at the time when i first read it yeah you always get an illustrious book artifact if you pick the top one it's not even a chance you, you just always get one so i don't know what i feel about that i guess it makes sense you're kind of spending a lot of money for books when you get there i guess it makes sense you're guaranteed to i don't know if i prefer it to be like a a tier below illustrious is it rare i can't remember masterwork is it i can't remember off the top of my head and uh, I think it'd be better if it was a chance at that and then a, a pretty good chance at Illustrious for it to always be Illustrious. I'm not too sure uh, how I feel about that. But again, let me know what you think in the comments down below. 
Maybe it's not too bad, but here is an example. Welsh court politics, plus one diplomacy, 0.10 prestige a month, and 20% diplomacy lifestyle experience. So it's nothing too crazy. Obviously, this is just an example. As we've seen, these can change quite a bit, even within the same kind of tiers. So this isn't too crazy. I suppose if I'd spent 200 gold, you are getting the other bonuses. And that 200 gold only placeholder, it's probably going to be more. It's not too bad. 20% more diplomacy lifestyle experience is pretty decent. Obviously, you keep that for the rest of your characters unless you lose this artifact. So it's just a nice uh, bonus. Conclusions. So this concludes today's lecture, basically just the dev diaries, how they've kind of framed it. There is a question here, which I like how they've kind of put this in already because they, they knew people were going to ask this. That's not how universities worked. No ruler would go to university like a commoner. And they basically say here, yeah, we know that. But we kind of wanted to put this in as some flavor of showing how medieval universities kind of worked and just to kind of bring some extra gameplay in for adult characters. So although it's not historically accurate, it's not like too crazy. And I think I would agree with that. Yeah, this isn't really how these things worked in the past, but I think thematically it fits in Crusader Kings. There's a lot of things in Crusader Kings that didn't happen in real life. And I like the ones like this, where it's like, yeah, this isn't exactly how it worked, but we wanted to put it in the game. It brings some cool gameplay for your characters that we couldn't really otherwise give you. So uh, we're going to kind of like, not make an exception, but we're going to put it in there because I think you'll enjoy it. And uh, there we go. That is it. Hope you visit universities soon. This is actually the last dev diary before the July break. As always, in Sweden, they have a bigger kind of summer break. So yeah, they're going to be off until August sometime. So this will be the last dev diary for a couple of weeks. As always, I hope you've enjoyed it. Hit that like button if you have. If you're new here, I cover all the dev diaries. I play narrative campaigns for Crusader Kings 3, new stories, guides, and just chats basically about the game. And I also cover other historical strategy games on the channel as well. So subscribe if you enjoy that. That is going to be it for today. I'll see you in the next one.